was an important thing for, for the gay rights movement in the 50s and 60s. Um, later on, the Supreme Court held initially in a case called Bowers v. Hardwick uh, that uh, it was constitutional to make sodomy a crime as it had been for a very, very long time. Uh, and specifically uh, that uh, homosexual sodomy could be singled out. And of course now we're facing the same-sex marriage issue. And that really just involves a, a very simple question, whether it's uh, under the Equal Protection Clause, whether it's rational to keep um, um, gay people from marrying, uh, given the fact that they are certainly as capable of long-term relationships and have every interest in um, proclaiming their commitment to each other. World War II was really the uh, the com a kind of uh, coming out experience for a lot of gay people. Uh, men in the military were on their own, they were away from home for the first time. It was really an opportunity and, and, and to, to explore their own sexuality away from the, from the uh, constrictions of their hometowns and their parents. Right. And it was also true for women as well. Women in factories, uh, their social life had changed completely. Uh, they were all together. It was easier for lesbians to find each other and to develop a, a, a social network. Stonewall, of course, was the trigger for the modern gay rights movement, but there had been a foundation laid. And um, then the 70s was a period of, uh, of sexual expression. There, there were some uh, political uh, uh, aspects to it. Um, but then you have the AIDS crisis, and I think that AIDS crisis really changes the trajectory of the gay rights movement. The gay community needed uh, research done and they needed uh, all, all sorts of uh, social services and uh, uh, that was important. And I think the AIDS movement made it impossible for any gay man or woman to ignore uh, the fact that uh, they were living in a political world, uh, one that they needed to know about and they needed to uh, influence. I encountered a book called uh, Court and Justice by um, Deb Price and Joyce Murdoch, which really uh, uh, described uh, Supreme Court decisions uh, and uh, lower court decisions. What influenced me was not the law that was being described. I understood that the Supreme Court was not a, a bastion of progressivism on gay rights in the, in the 50s and the 60s and the 70s. and um, but uh, it was the facts of the case, the different cases that were described. I really understood for the first time the degree of oppression and persecution that gays faced. And I wanted to know how that happened, why the law was so oblivious to that um, in, in the first instance, uh, and then uh, how, how the change occurred over time, uh, that we're now in a different place. W was the law responsible for that? Were we a, were, was, was the law as an institution, and the legal institutions, a catalyst? Or was it, was it an obstacle? And what I found was it was a little bit of both, actually. Uh, writing this was a real pleasure. Um, I, I was a lawyer for many years, and uh, people have said the book is very clear, and, uh, and I appreciate that.